Greetings, fellow aliens. Today, I will explain something that puzzles many alien visitors, funny situations, jokes, and laughing, in one word, humor. My videos are usually based on a mix of earthling literature, alien sources and conclusions drawn from my own observations. Humor, however, is a tricky thing which puzzles alien and earthling scientists alike. So, this episode is entirely based on an earthling book released one solar cycle ago, Inside Jokes, using humor to reverse engineer the mind. It provides the most convincing theory about humor I've seen so far. You'll find a link in the description below. Let's start with a typical funny situation. An earthling crosses a river, a body of hydric acid, by walking on stones, when one of the stones turns out to be an animal. This mistake <laughs> triggers a peculiar reaction, the earthling produces strange rhythmic noises, called laughing. The whole phenomenon is called humor. Early alien visitors of Earth thought that laughing is an artificial respiratory distress induced by the brain, in order to punish mistakes. However, this can't be right, for earthlings actually enjoy laughing, which is very strange. Anyway. Humor seems to be triggered by mistakes, based on false assumptions. To understand what is going on, we have first to understand the important role of assumptions for the earthling mind. Earthlings are often compared to levy drones of the tax authority. Like drones, earthlings create a model of the environment in their mind, in order to make decisions. This model is called mental space. Unlike drones, an earthling is even capable of handling several mental spaces simultaneously. For example, one mental space for the present, one for last night, one for the near future, and one for a video game he is currently playing. However, drones perform continuously full-spectrum scans of the environment, whereas the earthlings' rudimentary senses provide very incomplete data. In consequence, the earthlings have to fill the gaps by making educated guesses. In other words, assumptions. A second problem is time. No matter whether in an airplane or in a bar, earthlings have often no choice but to make decisions in a limited amount of time, based on incomplete data. So, assumptions are unavoidable, but unfortunately, false assumptions can have fatal consequences. That's where humor comes in. Let us try to define what humor actually is. Humor seems to be triggered by the discovery of a false assumption, like the assumption that the thing in the river is a stone. But not every false assumption is funny. For example, if the earthling is just sitting at the shore of the river, sees what might or might not be a stone, but doesn't decide what to believe, it's not funny. He has to commit to the false assumption, he has to take it as truth rather than a mere possibility. Secondly, if he commits to a false assumption which leads to fatal consequences like losing his legs, it's not funny either, at least not for him, right now. More generally, it's not funny if the discovery of the mistake is loaded with negative emotions. So, humor only occurs when the earthling commits to an assumption which turns out to be false, but harmless. Thirdly, if the earthling wonders consciously whether the thing in the river is an animal, then decides it's a stone, it's not funny either to discover it's an animal. It's necessary that the assumption has entered the mental space covertly. Let me explain this in a typically earthling manner, with a metaphor. Let's say, this is the earthling mind. Many assumptions enter the mental space by the font door, are examined and analyzed, before the mind accepts or refuses them. But some assumptions entered the mind by the back door and establish themselves without having been thought over. Such sneaky assumptions are vicious, if the mind trusts them, as they can do a lot of harm. Now we can define what humor is. It's the discovery of those sneaky false backdoor assumptions before they can do any harm. So, humor occurs when, a, an assumption enters the mental space covertly, b, the mind takes it to be true, c, the assumption is revealed as false, d, the mistake is discovered without causing harm or strong negative emotions. To be exact, the earthling book this episode is based upon doesn't speak of assumptions, but of active beliefs, which is a bit more precise. But as often, I had to simplify some things in order to keep the video accessible to anybody. There are two other species in the galaxy which have a similar sense of humor. The difference to earthlings is that they hate it. Both species live in the Aronian system and have been supervised by the same bio-administrator. Apparently, this administrator thought it would be a good idea to have their mind punish them for discovering false assumptions. The result, however, was a disaster. 
one of the species, the Cunctators, became obsessive with double and triple checking everything before making the smallest decision, even when they were, for example, chased by a horde of furious enemies. This way they avoided some mistakes, but they became incredibly slow and unable to make decisions under pressure. Their world eventually became a planet of bureaucrats. The second species, the Shieldarians, became masters of not recognizing errors. The guild hall of the planetary capital, for example, has no windows because the builders forgot to build them. But everybody pretends that everything is fine. The cities of the planet are full of such architectural errors, which makes it a popular destination for tourists. The earthling humor works much better, instead of punishing false assumptions, it rewards diffusing those sneaky false assumptions before they can do any harm. The goal is probably to avoid such mistakes in the future without discouraging the earthling from making assumptions. But what about other people's mistakes? Well, watching someone else committing to a sneaky false assumption is equally funny, even more if the observer discovers the mistake before the actor falls for it. It's even funny if the mistake is harmful, as long as the observer doesn't care. However, death is rarely funny, except for fictional characters or people the observer doesn't care about at all. That's because earthlings consider death as something tragic, even when someone dies of old age. This is strange, as earthlings and virtually all creatures on earth are biologically programmed to die someday. Except for, the microbes. <laughs> now we understand why earthlings enjoy humor, it's a reward for diffusing false sneaky backdoor assumptions before they can do any harm. But that doesn't explain the strange noises earthlings make when encountering humor. Those noises are called laughing. To understand this, we have to examine two other things which may trigger laughing, playing and tickling. In episode 5 we have learned that earthlings, especially earthling cubs, are used to simulate danger situations for training purposes. This is called playing. Now, bystanders may mistake playing for real danger, especially if the players emit alert signals such as screaming or calling for help. That's why earthling nature developed a false alarm signal, laughing. When an earthling hears alert signals mixed with laughing, he understands that the alert is not serious and that the danger only exists in the fictional world of the game. Odds are that this no danger signal is the original purpose of laughing. To understand tickling, we need some background information. It has to do with two feelings, pain and itching. Pain is a very unpleasant alert feeling following an injury. Severe pain usually triggers screaming and calling for help. Itching is another alert feeling indicating the presence of a parasite on the skin, it triggers scratching to remove the parasite. Itching is less unpleasant than pain, except when lasting for a prolonged period of time. But what has this to do with laughing? Well, serious combat between earthlings, as well as ritualized combat, usually has the goal to inflict pain. But playful combat, especially between earthling cubs, aims at itching rather than pain, by touching sensible areas with the fingers. This is called tickling and the usual reaction is screaming mixed with laughing, in order not to alert bystanders. Again, laughter is used as a signal that there is no serious problem. So initially, laughing is a communication signal, more precisely a signal that indicates false alarm. Now, a surprise like the animal in the river often triggers screaming before the earthling realizes that there is no real danger, so the earthling laughs to cancel the alarm. That's possibly the origin of laughing as reaction to humor. Scientific advice. If you want to examine laughing, it may prove difficult to obtain it with humor, as your test subjects will probably be terrified by the situation. You might try out other methods like tickling or cannabis. But the simplest way of making an earthling laugh is by making them inhale nitrous oxide, known on earth as laughing gas. The alarm signal of screaming is actually infectious. Screaming earthlings may make other earthlings scream, even if they don't know what is going on. This is called panic and it's a mechanism to alert a group quickly in case of imminent danger. Now, if the false alarm signal of laughing has the purpose of cancelling the screaming alarm, it has to propagate in a similar way. That's probably why laughter is also infectious. Strategic advice. When you invade Earth, panic can be a powerful weapon. An effective way of creating panic is to terrorize Earthlings with mighty war machines. However, when you hear Earthlings laughing at their approach, your war machines might not be as terrifying as you thought. One reason might be that you have underestimated the size of Earthlings. As mentioned before, funny situations are rewarded by pleasure. But Earthlings wouldn't be Earthlings if they hadn't found ways of creating this pleasure artificially. In its simplest form, the artificial humor is called jokes. A joke is typically a funny story, question or remark. 
Most jokes feature a fool falling for a false assumption. Sometimes the fool is in the joke. Occasionally the teller pretends to be the fool. But more sophisticated jokes make the listener the fool, by tricking him into making a false assumption. An example for the fool being inside the joke, how do you get a Polari in a Q3 mini saucer? Tell him 16 of his kind are already inside. In this case, the Polari is the fool. Of course, the joke isn't funny if you don't know about the Polari culture's obsession with the number 17. And even if I explain it, it won't get funnier, explaining a joke is like dissecting an earthling, few people enjoy it, and the earthling dies. Other examples, how do you get four squids in a Q3 mini saucer? One on the pilot seat, and three on the passenger seats. In this case, the fool is the teller who pretends not seeing that the problem is the size of the squids, not the number of seats. How do you get three Andromeda lawyers in a Q3 mini saucer? You can't, because the squids are still inside. In this case, the listener is the fool, because he was led into assuming that the two jokes are not connected, or in other words, that they don't share the same mental space. How do you get two Polaris in a Q3 mini saucer? Via hyperspace express line 37, exit Polaris. Again, the listener is the fool who misunderstood the question. This is a pun, a joke that plays with the ambiguity between words, in this case between the plural of Polari, and the star Polaris. Now some more examples for my earthling viewers, who don't know anything about Polari culture and hyperspace express lines. How do you know there is a squid in your refrigerator? By the tentacle traces on the butter. How do you know there are two squids in the refrigerator? You can hear them giggle when the light goes out. How do you know there are three squids in the refrigerator? You can't quite close the door. How do you know there are four squids in the refrigerator? There is an empty Q3 mini saucer parked outside. Another form of artificial humor are comedies. Comedies are full-fledged stories full of jokes and funny situations. Like all stories, they are created in the form of novels, stage plays, films, etc. There is an ongoing discussion among alien scientists whether the movie Prometheus is actually a comedy. On one side it follows the classical comedy formula, some idiots go someplace and do stupid things, but on the other side, earthlings don't laugh when watching the movie. My hypothesis is that Prometheus is actually a safety video for future astronauts. The goal is to warn about stupid mistakes one can make in a space mission, don't hire morons. Don't pet creepy alien creatures. Don't smuggle alien goo on board. Don't test alien goo on your fellow astronauts. And, for galaxy's sake, don't disturb the siesta of a giant alien who wants to kill all earthlings. Tips for tourists. Usually, earthlings will be afraid when they see you. But when you visit North America during this time of the year, odds are that you will make earthlings laugh. The reason is an annual ritualized game where earthling cubs disguise as creatures of the night and grown-ups pretend to be scared by them. The cubs find this funny, despite the fact that the mistake only occurs in the make-believe world of the game. Anyway, earthlings will probably think you are a disguised earthling cub. You might even make new friends and earn some free glucose. Earthlings usually think of humor as some kind of gratuitous pleasure. But from an evolutionary point of view, it has a very specific purpose, training to diffuse those nasty false backdoor assumptions, before they can do any harm. So, once again, it all comes down to our old friend, the genetic imperative. In the next episode we will learn about earthlings' food, what they eat and drink how they prepare it, and why they love spoiled food like cheese or wine. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to be alien.